It is a momentous time for our country. South Carolina has already seceded and declared the Union dissolved. And Abraham Lincoln is sure to be the next president. Everyone fears war is coming no matter what. That's why the Pony Express is so important. Boys like Peter Lundy aren't just carrying messages east and west. They're carrying history. The powerful words of powerful men at $5 a half ounce. My name, Alexander Majors of Russell Majors and Waddell, founder and operator of the Pony Express. We searched out the best riders and horses to race from St. Joe, Missouri to Sacramento, California, to keep both ends of our country sewed together like a ragged sack. Fever, don't he? Well, don't you worry none about Peter Lundy. Once he gets his heels into a fresh horse, he'll make up his time. Besides being the best writers, my boys are young men of character. They all have to sign my pledge. While I'm in the employ of Alexander Majors, I agree not to use profane language, not to get drunk, not to gamble, not to treat animals cruelly, and not to do anything else that is incompatible with the conduct of a gentleman. And I agree if I violate any of these conditions, to accept my discharge without any pay for my services, so help me God. Peter Lundy, like all our writers, didn't favor passing the Indian burial grounds, but the Pony Express doesn't pay the boys to take the long way around. Catch yourself a mess of catfish or shoot a buffalo. I take you, you're lucky. On the move every dang minute, seeing the world. Dad outruns some Rappahoes, three of them. Well, where there's one trouble, you can generally find three. The way I see it, 
present cause of hostilities is due to a cow with a full udder of milk. It's all clear and plain to me. Indians stole this here milker from the United States Army. Some rabble-headed lieutenant demanded the life of the thief. The tribe naturally refused to give him up, see? So what does the Army do? They open fire, leaving a lot of Indians rattled and dead. In the years before I met Peter, and he joined the Pony Express, he lived in the Nebraska Territory on the North Platte River, where his father owned a trading post. It was on the emigrant trail in one of the very few spots where the increasing number of travelers heading west, weary from the long journey, could stop, replenish their supplies and rest themselves and their animals in relative safety. like any 15-year-old helping his mother and grandmother, working for his father, a trader by any man's terms. And there was friend Adam and Bart, good old Bart. But this is the story of Peter Lundy and his coming of age. Feels warmer already, Ma. Oh, good. <laughs> if you were to go to the finest tailor back in Syracuse or New York City, I doubt if you'd get a better fit. Now, only the hem to turn up. Making a milk sop of that boy. Peter doesn't need another Quincy sore throat this winter. Yeah, he'll have one. Wool shirt or no. Yeah, sharp winter coming. Feel it in my bones. Well, we've got immigrants to take care of, Peter. If your mother can loosen her hold. Take care of your chores. Peter. Thanks, Grandma. Okay, I ain't got no time to play, Bart. My name is Hugo Romolov. From Wisconsin we come, by Milwaukee. Over there. Now, then. It has been a very bad journey here. The past is a bucket of ashes. Let us improve upon the present. What be your need now? Boy, he's got measles. He need good warm clothing. For this I trade. Ein Stier. I make it two Stier. Yeah, two Stier I give. Rumpelhoff, that uh, gangly yellow haired boy over yonder is Peter Lundy, my own son. Mrs. Lundy coddles him, makes him puny. Hmm? Yeah. Woman through that. No, I don't know. Wrong off. Too steer, all skin and bone and sore footed. By the time I fattened them up for trade, I'd have too much money in them. Uh, uh, tobacco. Good tobacco. I still have a supply from the last immigrants through here. Herr Lundy, maybe you like some schnapps. A little jug schnapps? It strikes me your boy needs a good, warm, hand-wove shirt more than my boy. Peter? 
Whether your ma's finished or not, fetch the new shirt. Pa. I said fetch the shirt. I'm not worried about the shirt, Ma. Except that you made it for me. This poor boy my size is sick with the measles. It's finished. I'm glad for that. Isn't there any way we can stop Pa from trading it, Ma? Trading's his only pleasure. He thought of something nice and warm for a sick boy. Don't you see how generous that was? No! No, I don't see! Then at least try to understand until I give you reason enough. Needn't concern yourself about the shirt, Grandma. My concern isn't for the shirt, Emily. Something on your mind? Nothing. You will say the boy needed the shirt more than you. He was sick. And you are not. If a man be a trader, Peter, he must practice his art. I guess so. You saw I made a good bargain. Yeah, but it was Ma's sewing. Everything under this Lundy roof belongs to me. Everything. To be shared within this family as I see fit. But you share with them. They're not family. I cheat no one, and no one cheats me. And I give a man his due when he deserves it. You've cause to remember that. Of all. Well, out here in this wilderness that ain't even a state, affecting <laughs> one's parents' will ain't a thing only for fun. You're right enough there. You know, I think it's time for one more round. Anybody favor a silver dollar in the pot? Well, I'll throw in. Count me in two. Count me in. Boys? <laughs> Very good. Very good. You the traitors, youngin? What about it? My pa's better than yours. He's the one who just finished cutting that bottle. But that don't make him better. I got a cat's eye says he is. What you got? Piece of fool's gold. Wanna bet? The idea is to uh, kill the flame without shattering the candle. Peter! Place the target. Mind you, don't snuff the flame. That'll be my job. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Business first. Okay, all right, everybody out of here. Come on, get back, kids. Go on.
ain't yours yet. It's gonna be. We'll put it down till it's one. Get any buzzer in that, Lundy? Hey, you paid your silver dollar to find out. shot was St. Joe. I knew that and you didn't. I cheat no one and no one cheats me. that Eve got into trouble? <laughs> no. <laughs> Where can I find Lundy? Well, I'm Peter Lundy, the owner's son. My pa's gone for a while, and I'm in charge now. Well, now, ain't I in luck? That, uh, fool looks like he's pretty wore out. Oh, he's well enough. I know. I'm a doctor. Doctor Lefty Slade. <clears throat> well, that, uh... Mare looks uh, right young to have a colt. Looks like a real Indian pony, doesn't it? It's a scalp. Yes, a Sioux. They gave it to me for saving a chief's life. He had cholera and measles. At the same time? Oh, yes. Sick as a poisoned dog. So you can see why they gave me this mare and a foal. The past is a bucket of ashes. We must improve upon the present. What be your needs now? Well, I've got to meet me a rich party that needs doctoring in a hurry. But I can't be held up by a suckling, bothering his ma all the time. Well, it don't look like he's bothering his ma now. She's too wore out. I want to put shoes on this Indian pony. I can't pay you, of course, till I cure this rich man of whatever ails him. So I figured that I'd leave this strapping younger here as a pay down. And separate him from his ma? When I come back, I'll pay you double for the shoes and collect the poor off them. Well, now, suppose you get killed uh, between here and there. Well, if I get killed, who's to claim the colt? Why, he'd belong to Peter Lundy here. To me? Well, uh... You'll be in charge, little brother. Well, I guess we could make a deal. Does the mayor get them shoes or not? Bard, no! Let it be, mister. Let it be. Let it be. Time short. Now you can understand that, can't you, Lundy boy? Is this really your exercise book when you're a little, Ma? 
Uh-huh. When I was 11 or 12. Historic dates to remember. Columbus landed in the New World in 1492. First horses landed at Santo Domingo in 1493. Santo Domingo. What does that mean in Spanish? It's already in Spanish. I mean English. Holy Sunday, I think. Santo Domingo. That would be a good name for a horse, don't you think? You mean for that sprout of a colt you got out there in the corral? Well, he doesn't have a name yet. The colt's only a temporary payment for the shoes, Peter. Man said he'd be coming back, didn't he? But if he doesn't... Seems like that colt's gonna get a name whether he wants it or not. I could just shorten it to San Domingo. Or just plain Domingo. Nothing plain about that. Domingo. That's it, Domingo. You're right, Grandma, whether he wants it or not. It's Mother and Bart. Oh, it's just probably some of them immigrants stumbling around out there. Did you take a look, Peter? Sure, Mom. Best to take the rifle. Bart? Who's out there? Pa, you were supposed to be home for two more days. Going hunting? Well, I didn't know it was you. That's a good reason. This stand in the light, prime target for any bushwhacker. Growing up means staying alive long enough to do it. No. Sweet is the revenge of an eye for an eye. But why take revenge on a man when you can outwit him? Yes, Jethro. Oh, Lord. Not thy will, but mine. Looks like my son. Well, you don't sound like him. Pa, there's no Your father's gone for a long him. trip, Peter. He has things to tell us. I fathomed a double truth on this day, in trading and in life. Have you, Jethro? Number one is, copy the ways of the hunting cat who sits patient for her prey. Number two, observe every man who crosses your path. Each is one of a kind. Some peculiarity like a red birthmark or a cleft chin or eye colors that don't match. Any special mark that can trigger your memory to a point in time right out of long ago. Have you met such a man, Jethro? I met him. And I let him go. But first, I showed him I could outwit him and outtrade him. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Well, I'm content to let the Lord take over. Look, Ma, it's Domingo's Ma. I wonder how she found her way back here. Suppose she ran away from that Dr. Slade? Don't you see? That's what Paul was talking about. He took her in for trade. For her and the Buscadero belt and the pistols. And trade for what? That Narragansett pace Paul was riding. Don't you think he made a good swap? Yes, a good swap. <sighs> and now our little family's back together again. You know, Ma, Domingo's gonna be strong. Think so. Look at the way he feeds. You stood in my place at this counter yesterday? Yes, sir. Ever see this list? Yes, sir. It states my prices for buying and selling goods. <laughs> to places with that consarn coat! It'll be a troublemaker till he's gone. Gone? Pa, he's mine! Dr. Slade gave him to me. Dr. Slade, is it?
ever hear of the staff of life? Yes, sir. What is it? Bread. Speak up! Bread. What is bread made of? Flour. And when I buy flour, what do I pay for it per pound? The pa, these immigrants came through with bad luck. They had extra wheat and flour. Per pound? Twelve and a half cents. And when I sell? Fifty cents. How much did you pay these hard luck immigrants for their wheat and flour? Pa, I thought there'd still be enough profit for both sides. How much? Forty cents. Sorry, I just dropped a little piece of men in arm. Well, I guess it weren't too little. Mayor. Fine. Got the same markings as the colt. Well, she's pure Indian, Grandma. You can see that. Why don't you take the mare out for a ride, Peter, as long as she's out? Well, I don't think Domingo would like that too much. <laughs> Let him bell her. Do him good. <laughs> she could probably use a bit of a holiday from that hungry baby yeah. of hers. Well, maybe it might be a good time to start his weaning. Short gallops only, Peter. Remember, she's pretty young to be a mother. Yes, ma'am. I never saw the boy light up so much as lately. Yes. I'm glad for that reason. Good friend. Red Cloud. Red Cloud? Is Red Cloud your chief? Red Cloud. Uh, fr friend of Red Cloud. Kolo Washte. Red Cloud comes to my father's trading post many times. Friend, Peter Lundy. Kolo Washte. Okay. Red Cloud will make war, and many will die. Tell Red Cloud who steal Indian pony, and maybe we not make war. A man came to the trading post, Dr. Slade. It was his mare. He said he got it for making a chief well. Red Cloud was not sick. Could have been a chief. Tell Red Cloud more about this Dr. Slade. We had two guns here. And a withered hand like this. No doctor. Road agent. Kante, Ohitika, yellow hair, washte. Kola washte.
Wash day. She's got a new colt. Uh, trade for Indian pony colt. Uh, give him new shoes. Uh, colt back at the trading post. Colo wash day. Want to keep cold. I take fine care of him. You keep Indian Pony Colt. She will make many more for me. Many as fingers of Red Cloud's hand. Thank you, Red Cloud. Yellow hair. Still have yellow hair. <laughs> you lucky man. Yes, sir. Channel. Took him long enough. <laughs> Proud time for a young man, breaking his first horse. the storage chest the other day. I saw your straight razor put away. It's still sharp. Just dropped it before I put it away. Well, I guess you don't have much use for it anymore since you got a full flower and beard. Adam says good steel needs using or it loses its temper. 
No, he does, does he? He made a joke, but it's true enough. I was wondering about the razor. Wondering? If I could use it. You? Well, I'm near 16, Pa. A man ought to have a clean shaved face if he don't have a beard. Peach fuzz. It's gonna thicken up. Well, when I see something thick enough to shave, we'll speak of this again. Someone left the barn door open. 16 years he left his native home. And to Australia's sunny shore, he was inclined to roam. He robbed the rich and helped the poor. He stabbed James McAvoy. A terror to Australia was the wild colonial boy. One morning on the prairie, as Jack rode along. That's one thing for certain. Oh, Peter, I told you to be careful on that slidey roof. Oh, it's my fault, ma'am. If I hadn't come up in them suddenly, he would have watched the step. Sudden? We heard you a mile away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like I was kicked by a mule. Oh, here's a culprit, lad. You must have landed on this. Hurt your ribs. Mm. Now, show me where it stabs the worst. Mm. Mm, that's it. That's what? Well, it appears certain his third and fourth ribs on the left side are cracked. Oh, no, Peter. All right, Ma. You're a stout lad here, little lady. Something chicken liberate about him. Besides, <laughs> friend of Breslau knows a thing or two about ribs, both men's ribs and horses' ribs. Be you a doctor, Mr. Brisloin, or be you a talker? Well, a little of both, Mother. But I can bind a cracked bone with the touch of an angel. <laughs> Despite of uninvited opinions to the contrary. I guess I'm lucky you came. Can you do it, Peter? Sure, no. Don't hurt hardly at all. Ah, how's the new binding, lad? I can feel it. It's got to be tight to be good. Then you did good. I thank you kindly for your help, Mr. O'Breslin. Mm -hmm. Seems a trade more to my favor for that good cooking of yours, Mrs. Lundy. Oh. I suppose the boy still can't feed the animals or do his chores. He has to mend, Jethro. It'll only be another day or so, Pa. Oh, more like a week, lad. Maybe two. The boy's got bruises, contusions, and fractures of the ribs. Mr. O'Breslin's decided to stay on a while to make sure Peter heals proper. A while? Uh, need to let me own critters do some healing, too. Ah, they're foot sore. I'm playing worn out from all the walking. You sound more like a doctor than a surveyor, Breslin. Well, I fancy myself. I a knack for doctor in Lundy. The way some folks have got a green thumb for growing. Or the way an uncommon man knows how to trade, benefiting both himself and the poor soul on the other side of the counter. Stay, if you like. You 
made this map? Me? Hand me Surveyor's Transit. Now, follow along. Right here, St. Joe. Me and the animals traipse along the big old Missouri River. We'll meet up here with the plat. As soon as do we get here, to Nebraska Territory, and we run into a big party of Pawnees. What would you do? Ah, uh, some light and fancy talking. And trading. That's how I got me a real Indian barb horse. Choctaw there. I've never heard of a barb horse before. Huh. You need to do some learning, lad. That's that medicine hat of yours. Just happens to be a fine barb horse himself. Indians stole them from the Spanish grandees, the missionaries. Does that make them special? Special? Come on. Special doesn't even come close. Come on, here. Come on. You see, a barb is smaller and tougher than any big critter. Here, take a look. A barb. A barb is a fox low coot. Keeps his back legs under him. Good balance when he's running. Never knew I had such a prize. Oh, I did some second into the matter. You see, the round leg bones he's got, instead of flat. I never noticed that before. And he's minus chestnuts, and the insides of his legs, too. You'll always be able to identify him. I could always identify Domingo. No, don't be too sure. Thieves are mighty clever at paint dog and disguising, even a medicine hat. A barb like Domingo can head a cow or pull a plow, and he can take pound and travel day after day, and he won't pull up lane. He's what you call a get-there horse. Twinkles all that? All of that. And two ribs less. Less? Yeah. You see, man tinkered horses, well, like that one, along to your paw, all have six lumbar vertebrae and 18 pairs of ribs. But barbs only have five vertebrae and 17 pairs of ribs. Well, how do you know until they're dead? Uh, you want to uh, fold up that map so somebody doesn't step in it. Oh, and now the storm is all over and we are safe on shore. We will drink a toast to the holy ground and the girls we do adore. We will drink fine ales and porter and make their rafters roar. And when our money is all spent, we will go to see him for more, more. Fine girl you are! You're the girl I do adore. And still I live in hopes to see the holy ground once more. Fine girl you are! <laughs> Sing us another song. Music it charms to quell the savage, bend an oak or split a cabbage. <laughs> I kept your supper warm, Becca. Well, you're a lucky man, Lundy. Your missus has baked the best steel roast this side of St. Joe. Didn't mean to ask you about that, Breslin. You've come a long way. Yeah, so I have. And traveling alone? I've got the critters. No Indian trouble? Hmm. None to speak of. Indians think me crazy. They say, crazy man already dead. Can't kill a dead man. <laughs> what about wild animals? Not even a bear. There you one. I'd be obliged to know why. Well, you see, a man has got to be a teensy smarter than the bear. How do you figure that? Well, the way I do is uh, I look around sharp. 
before making camp. If the claw markings high in a tree, I figure big bear are about, so I move on to another camp. You make it sound very simple. What about the ones that don't see no claw markings where claw markings ought to be? What about them? Well, as I said, a man has got to be smarter than the bear. Think the boy's healing time be done with, Breslin? That seems strong. Growing stronger. Peter, I'll expect you to take back your chores come tomorrow. Being that's the time our visitor here tells me he's leaving. Leaving? Where in Wester here? I got me a homestead. Nestle in the Red Fox Hills. A mile back from the Oregon Trail. Never been there. Yep. That's where the Spanish bar pony and, and red foxes run strong. I got me a little cabin there from the old days. And a shack where I keep the bones. Bones? Ribs. The vertebrae. What? Of all the loyal Mustangs who have taken the long, long journey. Someday you'll have to come and see the proof of fury. And uh, you see me too while you're at it. Someday. The Pedro Domingo there. He's an Indian god, you know. Nothing can harm a rider on a medicine hat. Not sling stone or arrow. Not rifle ball. A lightning. Grizzly? What, lad? Could Domingo and I ride out with you? <laughs> Surveying is a lonely business. But I can set up your tripod and your plane table. And I can be a recorder. I can pack your gear and make camp and even cook rice without it's boiling over. Hold on. I'm honored by you wanting to come with me, Peter. And if we were five years older, even two, I'd snap up your offer quick as an eye wink. But I'm near 16. I know. I know. Now, besides being old for years and quick, you're as spunky as a dog with his first porcupine. So what is it? Why can't I go? It's your ma. My ma? She needs you, son, more than I do. You are her true comfort. It can't be your comfort forever. There'll be a right time to leave home. And you know for certain when that time comes. Well, it's been a, it's been a short one, Peter. But I got me a friend for life. I don't forget. The Red Fox Hills. A mile back from the Oregon Trail. I won't forget. I already said goodbye to you folks. I guess that folds the tent. Well, Penny, Black and Billy. Somebody better make a move. me out of sight. That's a strict Irish taboo. What would happen if I did? We'd never set eyes on each other again in this world. It was the wild colonial boy, Jack Duggan was his name. He was born and raised in Ireland in a place called Castle, Maine. 
He was his father's only son and his mother's pride and joy. And dearly did his parents love the wild colonial boy. At the early age of 16 years, he left his native home. And to Australia's sunny shore, he was inclined to roam. He robbed the rich, he helped the poor, he stabbed James McAvoy. A terror to Australia was the wild colonial boy. One morning on the prairie, as Jack he rode along, a listening to a mockingbird, a singing a cheerful song. Out stepped a band of troopers, Kelly Davis and Fitzroy. They all set out to capture him, the white colonial boy. I am Boulevard Roberts of Russell Majors and Waddell's Pony Express. <laughs> Boys, these trials are not only important to you and Fort Laramie, but to the whole country. as far away as St. Louis and Philadelphia and sent reporters out here to cover this glorious oh, event. Yeah. This is a contest to see how you ride and how quick you can change horses. We're testing for horsemanship, plain and simple. If you qualify as a rider, then you get to apply for the job direct to Mr. Majors himself. Do you boys understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Cody, William F. Cody. Right here, sir. And Miller, Lois Miller. Right here, sir. Yay! Well, go on, let's see what you can do. Oh! Look at the Pony Express is in town. Well, you gonna get out or not? Oh, sure. Thanks for riding, Mr. Stencil. No thanks necessary. Your pa paid me $2. on the horse till he stops. Think you can do that, boy? <laughs> you bet. Jim Baxter? Well, then the trader show him. I haven't seen you since the rifle match down at the trading post. When your pa pulled off that lucky shot. It wasn't a lucky shot. I told you my pa's the best shot West St. Joe. Oh, no! Now she turns in first. Yeah! Pony Express. They're looking for men. Wanted young, skinny, wiry fellows not over 18. Must be expert riders willing to risk death daily. Orphans preferred. Wages $25 per week. $25 per week? 
You'd have to be a good rider, like me. I'm good as you and skinny enough. Good riding, lad. Good riding. Yeah, they want orphans. It says it's, it's, it doesn't say it's necessary. It says it's preferred. Besides, you're no orphan. Your pa probably wouldn't even let you try out in this contest, knowing him. My pa ain't here. He's back at the trading post. <laughs> what did he let you come into town by yourself for? Came to the freight office to pick up some tools. That's how come. Besides, I'm old enough to do what I want. <laughs> We gotta throw that one back in the river till he grows another foot. <laughs> All right, let me see who's next here. I'd like to try, sir. My name is Peter Lundy. Lundy? Don't see no Lundy on the list. Oh, I just got into town. I live at the trading post out on Platte River. Mm. Suits me, Lundy. Choose your horse. You'll ride with Jones. Horace Jones! Here, sir. What are you waiting for? Afraid to get wet? Mount up. The pony runs in all weather. Mr. Majors, come next Thursday in that office there. Next Thursday? Mr. Majors, I'll remember. There, Adam. The thing's Pa ordered. Back already? Yeah, I guess I'm to feed the animals and uh, maybe take the Major for a ride. Lord, why'd I have to be here to see this? Mingo, speeding time. Uh, Come on, Domingo. I know you're in there. Domingo. Uh, 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 where's Domingo? My customers. Adam. Adam. Mr. Mingo is not in the crowd. There's nothing I can do, little brother. What happened? What's wrong? A man rode up here right after you. Left for Fort Laramie. What man? Rode up on that horse there, just big and bald-faced. Weren't a wicked man, little brother. Even give me some good eating tobacco. What about Domingo? His name's Alexander Majors, and he owns 6,000 wagon trains and a million to oxen to pull them. Mr. Majors traded with your Paul. Traded? He said he wanted a dandy little pony for his three little girls. Lord, there wasn't anything I could do, little brother. But how? How could Pa trade him? Well, first your pa said no. He said, no, he says the horse is for the boy. But the man just kept on and on. Well, you know how your pa is when he, when it's trading to be done. Your pa finally got that Mr. Major's big old thoroughbred over there. Ball. 
Old Galloway, they call him. Along with an ox and a, and a mule to boot. But Domingo was mine! Well, you gotta try to see him another way. Little brother. I mean, Paul was thinking about you, too. He said, and I remember, just, he said, that big horse, the boy sure liked that big horse. I remember, just plain as day. may make you strong enough to stand against the weight of your sorrow. Please don't interrupt me, Peter. Let me say it quickly. Your father used to guide men over the mountains. Some were gold seekers, some missionaries, and some were nesters who feared Indians and road agents. Often he would ride on ahead, hunting game, whatever he could find. By the time the party caught up, he'd have fire going and meat simmering in the pot. Are you listening, Peter? Yes. One day, when your father was alone on the trail, his horse pulled up lame. He dismounted to set a loose shoe. And that was when it happened. Out of nowhere, a huge grizzly pounced on him tearing and clawing at him until much of his flesh was in shreds. The scars on his shoulder that he's always tried to hide? Yes, that's when it happened. When the others caught up, he was close to death. But the men decided to go on anyway. He probably told them to go on and leave him alone. That's the way he is. they did leave one of the gold seekers behind to stay with your father the few hours he had left to give him a decent burial in his own blanket but Jethro Lundy willed himself to live on the third day he was still alive This is when the man pulled off your father's blanket with a withered hand. Withered hand? He stole Jethro's horse and left him to freeze to death. But your father crawled with his hands, dragging his useless legs behind him like a paralyzed thing until a prospector found him. Can you imagine the aching for revenge that has racked him all these years? But he never said anything to me. That's because he's somehow fashioned a sense of shame to it. How could he not be strong enough? How could he not be smart enough than to let a grizzly catch him by surprise? He must have been pretty strong to live through all that. You're made of the same stock, Peter. Mom, we're different. Not nearly so much as you think. The man with the withered hand. Was it Lefty Slade, the one who gave me Domingo? I never knew his name until the other night. Paul could have said something about the grizzly all the same. Try to understand why he has been severe with you. In his way, he wants you to become strong enough and wise enough to face life as it is. 
But he traded Domingo. He believes in time you will come to realize that the thoroughbred is a better horse than Domingo. He even quoted to me from the Bible. When a boy is 16, he said he should put away childish things. Try to forgive him, Peter. He's forgotten how to love. Express, is it? I want to sign up, Pa. They're looking for men. I can ride and I can take care of myself. As long as your mother's on hand. I aim to try for the job. I already made up my mind. And your mother? She says up to you. Well, it doesn't appear to be up to me, seeing as you made up your mind. I just need a letter saying it's agreeable with you. And if I choose not to give this letter? Then I'm still leaving. Fetch some paper and a pen. What am I supposed to say in this letter? I have a whelp who's decided to kick up his heels like a man? A Tom Tit bet on getting himself killed? You need only give permission. Permission granted. Jay Lundy. send dispatches flying across this country to halt such notions. Now do you see the difference? Yes, sir. Now, first off, your weight. Are you always this late? Or have you been starving yourself to fit the qualifications of our handbill? Me starve? You don't know my mother, sir. Ah. I had a mother like that. The reason we need slim, wiry fellows the riders must maintain an average speed of 15 miles an hour, which would include time for a change of horses, detours when necessary, meals. That means that some parts of each route would have to be traveled at, say, 20 miles an hour. Well, I'm used to a fast pace, sir, at least when I had... We've bought 500 hardy horses, and we need 80 experienced riders. Would that include you? I've been around horses all my life, sir. I can even doctor them. Yeah. All to the good. All to the good. Um, I was wondering about Domingo. What's that? Um, the horse you trade with my pa? The medicine hat. Domingo. Oh, uh, yes. Of course, you, uh, you would be the son of Jethro Lundy, uh, Flat River. Yes, sir. Well, you have to know that Domingo's a fine fellow. 
stallion lets my three daughters ride him triple for hours at a time. Um, your thoroughbred is tied up outside, Mr. Majors. Ball Galloway? Ah. I'd be happy to trade him back with you if you miss him. Yes, I miss him. Uh, and I thank you for the kind offer, but uh, we'll, we'll let the trade stand in respect to your father's original intent. But my father... Well, he must indeed be proud of you at this moment. How is he? Fine, sir, but... Well, I'll need a letter of permission from him. There you are. Take that pledge and study it carefully. If you wish to sign it, find Bolivar and hand it over to him. He's our outfitter. He'll order you out a saddle and pistol. Ever used a pistol? It's for target practice, sir. And bottles and rocks. Well, you'll find the targets on this job more of the two-legged variety. Keep your eyes open at all times. Yes, sir. Now, well, Lundy. This will be a personal gift for me. To Peter Lundy. Good luck and Godspeed, Alexander Majors. Bible? I may be a businessman, but I believe there's a need for this too. These are words we can live by. pledge was a soft part of working for the Pony Express. Turns out we're exactly following Brisley's map, the one he made by hand. Only Brisley drew it at a slow walk. We're taking it at a hard run. He's a barker. These horses are getting wore down more by the week. Eli Dogberry says they're bringing in fresh horses. Yeah, don't count your chickens before they're hatched. Here comes Jim. Lincoln's been elected. <laughs> I figured to be, but he can't stop a war. Whoa. You try. There's still a pup. Sacramento's waiting. Now go on, get.
is deeply indebted to you for ridding this territory of a bandit who's been a scourge for a dozen years or more. In recognition of your courage, we shall include in your next pay a bounty of $50. I have also written a note to your parents at Flat River, telling them of your brave deed. It is my decision as your employer and friend that you take this time of recovery to visit them before returning to your post. Yours very truly, Alexander Majors. Hey, am I cooking rabbit for one or two? One. You go to Flat River. Mr. Majors wants me to see my kin. Good idea. You can take one of them fresh mouths, shake out some of the wrinkles. Oh, there's two of them. Take your pick. He's getting ready to leave. Seems that way. Only one day to spend with his mother. Well, little brother's got important work to do. Owes his mother a longer stay. Said my goodbyes at breakfast. You will be careful, Peter. Yeah, I've learned something about that. You were only a child, it seems. Here you are already out into the world. Nest is meant to fly from, Emily. Yes, I know. Oh, Peter. Thanks, Grandma. Grandma? Ma? I'd like it if no one watched me out of sight. It's an old Irish taboo. some grain in him if you're gonna run him hard. Thanks, Adam. Before he told me he said goodbye. Ride careful, buddy. Peter! Need a word with you.
take most of the day to reach Horseshoe. Most of it. That letter from Majors, he says you're doing a fair man's job. I gratefully think so. Don't strike me as one who'd be loose with his praise. Well, uh, since Major says you come damn near being a man, I suppose you'll have need for this. Coming in. That's Cody burning the legs off that horse. It's probably Karen Lincoln's inaugural. He is. You gotta keep the pace. Majors wants that message delivered to Sacramento within seven days. You know the country's counting on the pony to pull California back into the Union. Lincoln's inaugural! <laughs> you heard him, Peter. Try to stop them. They're scared pea green of Indians on the warpath. But Domingo's already run 15 miles from Horseshoe. Well, they have to run another 15. You're carrying the inaugural, ain't you? Yeah. Took his scalp. Come on, get on the back for you. Let's go. They was laughing loud and crazy when they killed him. Pee Wee, we've got to get out of here. Ryder, do from the west. We can't leave. You're on your own now. It's up to you, Peter. Get going. Go on. And good luck. Over 30 miles. No horse alive could ever do any better. Hang on, Domingo, hang on. It's one last patch of timber, and you'll be in the clear for the rest of the way.
safer out in the open. But shorter by a mile if we cut through the trees. Domingo, we can... Straight look. And you see why he's called Tiger Eye? Got a wild one there looking back at you. He's a bar? Pure as they come. It's almost like Domingo. Plain truth. Medicine happened all. But he's not Domingo. I know it hurts, lad. When a fella loses what it took him a long time to get close to. 
it was the best tourist I'll ever have. I reckon that's right. Hey, come on. I want to show you something. Now, I can prove it to the world. All of them pure power. Seventeen pairs of ribs each. You really meant it about the bones, didn't you? Well, I've got nothing else to do. Now that I'm living on the land like a Donegal prince. Uh, speaking of which, Peter, lad, what's it likely to be in your life from here on? I'm not sure. Mr. Major's told me to take a week off and think about it. I might enlist in the army as a scout. You make a good one. I might go back to the Pony Express. Mr. Major says I'd be more than welcome. That's a prime job for a young fellow. Except it wouldn't be the same without Domingo. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Hey, if you've got a week, I sure could use a favor. What kind of favor? Well, I got me an animal with a mind of his own. Transfixed. He's bending. Ain't bent yet. It's okay. I knew messing out like you once. He didn't like this either much at first. But he got used to it just like you're doing. Peter, lad, I'm sorry I can't be around to say goodbye. I got some traps to run, and the days don't stretch out long as they used to. I'd be kindly obliged if you'd take care of Tiger Eye and work him for a while. See if he's got any promise. It'll save me the worry. Your friend, Robert O'Bresloin. It was a gift. I knew that. A gift with no want and thanks in return. Wanna go home with me, boy? I knew something else, too. Grizzly was out there someplace watching me go. Breaking an old Irish taboo. as a child. I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. 